Yes, tomorrow on Netflix. Congratulations on the movie. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what it's about and who you play. Thank you so much. Um, the movie um, is by the great J um, Judd Apatow, who is a comedic genius. And I got the chance to work with all of these incredible actors, which is a comedy about actors trying to shoot a movie during a pandemic, focusing on their small little problems, losing their minds, pretty much like all of us, and realizing that there are some bigger things, scarier things, but it's funny, and it's search for the light in the darkness, yeah. in a way. I mean, it's, I, I'm really, really excited to see it. When you were shooting the movie, you, that was where you were in the UK when you found out that you'd been nominated for an Oscar uh, last year. Talk to me, what was that day on set like? So I wasn't supposed to be shooting that day. And I think it was something like a compliment. There are going to be the awards, announcements, everything. And I was like, no, I want to be on set. I don't want to be thinking about this. Because when you do something, it's not about the awards or the attention. It's about just the pleasure of work. Sure. But I was shaking. Uh -huh. And I was scared. And I was freaking out. And I think Judd put me doing a scene with Pedro. And we were supposed to touch hands in that scene. And my hands were losing it completely because I knew that it's that time that they're announcing it and I was looking carefully will somebody have some kind of face right. and trying to read by their emotions <laughs> nobody did anything and just said um one second one second he usually gives you notes on the mic and everybody can hear them and I was like oh god I'm terrible he's gonna fire me right now it's that bad that he doesn't even want to say it out loud and he came closer and he's like look at this camera I was like what what and then he told me and I think I jumped <laughs> and I might have fallen afterwards. That's so great. What a wonderful way to find out, to be told by someone like Judd. It's amazing. And I know I've told you this before. You absolutely deserve that nomination and everything that's happened in your career since. You really, really do. I mean, Stephen, your... Your first taste of the world of entertainment came when you, you used to be a DJ sure. at parties. Well, I imagine you I imagine you were very good at this. Well, let's just put this in perspective. When you imagine a DJ, you imagine sort of 2,000 people in a kind of Las Vegas club, right? That was not me. <laughs> I was doing a mobile disco at weddings. Yeah. Uh, the equipment we had built ourselves. Wow. My friend Andy and I. Um, and we were only teenagers, really. And um, <laughs> sometimes the equipment would overheat. Right. And the sound <laughs> would go off at once during the uh, first dance <gasps> during a wedding. Wow. Yeah, Christopher's Lady in Red. Lady in Red. And it just went off. <laughs> wow. And this couple were just... And we were fanning, you know, the, with, like, an LP cover, fanning, trying to get the amplifier going again. And then the, 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 the rest of the people at the congregation, they, they just kind of clapped like that, and they sort of finished their dance. <laughs> oh, we tried to get this going. And we were kids, so we couldn't afford to buy records, so we used to tape everything off the radio, all the singles off the radio. Oh, wow. And then try and fade out before the DJ came in. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, our biggest gig was a, uh, a big scout event. Oh, yeah. Scout for scouts, Boy Scouts. And, um, and I got a bit carried away, and I remember playing Rage Against the Machine. Ooh. And it, it all kicked off, and the kids were going crazy. And one of the scout masters came over and went, turn this off, they're going mad. And I went, it's rock and roll, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most rock and roll I've ever felt. I was... <laughs> And then I put on Smells Like Teen Spirit and someone tried to climb up the central column and that was too much, so I switched off. Right, yeah. yeah. That was... Cos I'm rock and roll, but I will not allow health and safety to be compromised. Correct. Um, but uh, we, we did it for a couple of years and, uh, no, they were happy days. They were, they were fun days, yes. Yeah. Reggie, do you have a question for our guest this evening? I do, James. Tonight's question goes to... Uh, uh, everybody. Uh, in a world that is filled with so many things and objects, specifically things that occupy space. And if you abstract that to the negative space, <laughs> what's the sweetest thing that's ever happened to you? Oh, I've been asked that question so many times. Yeah. Well, let's start with you, Maria. What's the sweetest thing that's ever happened to you? Sitting on this couch twice. Oh, look at you! <laughs> Stephen, what's the sweetest thing that's ever happened to you? Oh, my goodness, the sweetest thing. Do you know what? The sweetest thing was someone... This is very sincere now, but uh, a, a woman came up to me once in the street and she was a big fan of the, of the British version of The Office. And she said that she was worked with the ambulance service and that um, the ambulance guys had seen the most terrible things and they had had to, you know, pick up injured people and they'd seen terrible things. But they all watched the Christmas edition of The Office and they were all in tears and it was the first time she'd ever seen them crying. Aww. 
And I thought, Aww. isn't that wonderful that, you know, you could make some TV and it could affect people that are that hardened and that yeah. sort of incredible. So um, that was the sweetest thing, I think. Oh, that's amazing. Rich? Whoa, the sweetest thing. That's correct. It's absolutely correct. Please thank our incredible guests, Maria Bakalova, Stephen Merchant. Stick around. Wet leg. And here when we come back.